Okay, so um, direct indexing, right? It's been getting a lot of buzz lately, and I know a lot of you have been asking about it. People keep saying it's the super exclusive thing for you know the super wealthy. Mm. But from what we've been seeing, it seems like it might be becoming more accessible soon, which is really interesting. So today, we're going to do a deep dive into what direct indexing actually is. Okay. Why people are making such a big deal about it. And most importantly for you, like, should you even care? Yeah, it's definitely shaking things up in the financial world, that's for sure. For sure. So, okay. How do we explain this in a way that makes sense? Because there's a lot of jargon out there. Um, imagine you're building an investment portfolio. Okay. But instead of like, you know, just buying a pre-made basket of stocks, you get to pick and choose the exact stocks that you want, like putting together a puzzle. Right. But with companies, yeah. that's kind of the the gist of direct indexing. With you're creating your own like personalized index fund almost. Exactly. So instead of buying into, say, like an S&P 500 index fund where they've already chosen the 500 companies, right. you're like, no, I want these specific companies that I believe in or align with my values. And that's what's so intriguing about it, right? It's not just about maybe getting better returns. Right. It's about having way more control, more say in where your money goes. Yeah. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, that's a really appealing concept. Totally. But, you know, why would you go through all that? Why not just stick with a simple index fund? Well, you know, you've already hit on a couple of the big advantages that control that personalization. But the third one, and this is where it gets really interesting, especially for someone like you, is tax optimization. Okay, so we got to unpack that. But first, let's talk about personalization a little bit more. Sure. Because it's not just about like picking companies you like the name of. Right? No, not at all. Think of it this way. Let's say sustainability is like really important to you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. With direct indexing, you can specifically choose to leave out companies that don't match your values. Like let's say you don't want to invest in fossil fuels. Right. You can exclude those companies completely and then maybe even put more money into companies that are focused on, say, renewable energy. You're literally building a portfolio that reflects what you believe in. It's like investing with intention. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now let's dig into this whole tax optimization thing. It sounds really interesting, but I have a feeling it might be kind of complicated. It can be, but this is where direct indexing gets really powerful. And the key is something called tax loss harvesting. Okay, there's that word again, tax loss harvesting. It sounds really intimidating, but I have a feeling it's probably not as scary as it sounds right. You're right, it's not. It's actually a pretty straightforward concept. Basically, it's about using your investment losses okay. strategically to offset your gains, and that can potentially lower your tax bill by a lot. All right, so let's break that down, because I think this is something a lot of people could benefit from understanding. So how does this whole tax loss harvesting thing actually work in real life? Yeah. Okay, so let's say, just as a simple example, you own some stock, we'll call it stock A, and for whatever reason, it's down $500. Okay. But then you also have stock B, and that one's doing pretty well. It's up $500. Okay. So with direct indexing, you have the flexibility to sell stock A, you know, the one that's down. And by doing that, you're locking in that $500 loss. Right. And here's the key. You can actually use that $500 loss to offset the $500 gain you've made on stock B. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So basically, it's like canceling out the tax you would have had to pay on that gain. So it's like using one to cancel out the other. Exactly. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. And the best part is, if your losses for the year are actually bigger than your gains, okay, you can use up to $3,000 of those losses to even lower your ordinary income, like the money you make from your job. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. It can be super powerful. And get this, any extra losses, those can actually be carried forward to offset gains in the future potentially years down the line. It's like a tax saving strategy that that keeps on giving. Exactly. OK, that's really good to know. Um, you also mentioned earlier that having more control is a major advantage of direct indexing. Mm. So what does that look like practically? Is it like trying to, you know, time the market or something? No, not really. It's more about having the the ability to adjust your portfolio as needed. Mm -hmm based on like your own insights and, and your risk tolerance, of course. Right. So let's say, for example, you believe that a particular sector, like maybe renewable energy, yeah. is you know going to do really well. You can actually choose to invest more heavily in that sector with direct indexing than you could with a with a traditional index fund. Yeah. Or let's say, you know, you're a little nervous about how the economy is doing. Mm -hmm. You could decide to maybe reduce how much you're invested in certain 
companies or sectors that you think might be a little riskier. Yeah, that makes sense. It's more about aligning your portfolio with uh, like your own personal view of the market. So it's less about predicting the future okay. and more about just being strategic and, and aligning your investments with your own comfort level. Exactly. And being able to like react and adapt to changes when, when you need to. It sounds kind of empowering in a way. It can be, yeah. Mm. But remember, um, like with anything, there's always a flip side. Right. right. Every rose has its thorn. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, with direct indexing, one of the biggest downsides is the complexity. Right. We've been talking about all these moving pieces here. The personalization, the tax loss harvesting, adjusting your investments when you need to. Right. It definitely doesn't sound like the kind of thing you can just set and forget, like you might with a regular index fund. Exactly. <laughs> it requires a deeper level of involvement for sure. You got to be comfortable with with managing potentially a lot of different stocks, you know, keeping an eye on how they're performing, maybe making some adjustments here and there. Yeah, that makes sense. And that, of course, brings us to the cost. Right. Because all of this must come with a price tag, right? Yeah, that's a that's a common concern. Um, you know, because you are getting this really personalized um, service, essentially, with direct indexing, the fees can be a bit higher than what you'd pay for those, you know, super cheap index funds that a lot of people are used to. So it's really about weighing those potential tax benefits against the higher costs. Exactly. Exactly. It's a trade off. You know, for some people, especially those with, you know, larger portfolios who might have really complicated tax situations, the tax savings can be huge, you know, way more than making up for those fees. Mm -hmm. But for others, like maybe someone who's just starting out, um, you know, a traditional index fund might make more sense, at least to begin with. Right. So there's no like one size fits all answer here. Exactly. Exactly. It really depends on your own your own personal circumstance. Right. How much you have to invest, what your goals are mm -hmm. and and how comfortable you are with, you know, being a little more hands on with your investments. OK, so that actually makes me think of another thing that's been on my mind. Which is, you know, we keep hearing that direct indexing is really only for, like, the super wealthy. So how much do you actually need to have to get started with this? Yeah, you're right. Right now, there's definitely a pretty high barrier to entry. Um, you often need to have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars mm -hmm. to even get started with some of these direct indexing platforms. Wow. OK, so that really does kind of reinforce that idea that this is like an exclusive club. Right. But you hinted earlier that things might be changing, right? Yeah, that's the exciting part. We're starting to see a lot more platforms popping up that are trying to like democratize access to direct indexing. So they're offering like lower minimum investments. Yeah. And they're making their platforms way more user friendly. So it's becoming a lot easier for everyday investors to get in on the action. That's really interesting. So this could be a real game changer. It definitely could. OK, so we've we've covered a ton of information today about direct indexing, the good, the bad, the potential, the, the limitations. Right. If there's one thing that that you want listeners to take away from all of this, what would it be? You know, for me, I think the biggest thing to remember is that direct indexing is not about, you know, trying to beat the market or outsmart Wall Street or anything like that. Right. It's really about aligning your investments with what's important to you, your values, your financial goals, your risk tolerance. And it can potentially save you a lot in taxes along the way. It's like creating an investment strategy that is actually tailored to you. Exactly. You said it perfectly. Awesome. But, of course, it's not without its challenges. It does take more work. Mm -hmm. You have to really understand what you're doing or be willing to learn. And it's super important to factor in those costs, like we talked about, and to make sure that it makes sense for your situation. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, right now it's not going to be the right fit for everyone, especially like we said, if you're just starting out and don't have a ton of money to invest. But as technology keeps evolving yeah. and more of these platforms become available, it's definitely something that I think everyone should at least have on their radar. The investment landscape is changing so quickly these days. Mm -hmm. It's it's really exciting to see how this all plays out. It is. Well, on that note, I think we've done a pretty deep dive on direct indexing for today. So listeners, go out out there, do your research, think about whether this could be a good fit for you. And as always, keep those thought-provoking questions coming. We'll see you next time for another deep dive.